All right, Top 97, TT Torres, of course. Welcome to another episode of Artist Quarantine, all brought to you by Boost Mobile. And I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Rowdy Rebel, everybody, give it up, give it up. Ah, 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 what's up with it? TT Torres, Um, Do I say welcome home still? Because it's still really new. Yeah, why not? I still feel like I'm fresh home. I still like I feel like I still got a lot to do out here personally and still business wise. So yeah, welcome home. Welcome home. Thank you. It's I so appreciate it. It's so crazy because your publicist, um, we, me, and her have been trying to connect prior to you coming home. So I had like the the little inside on when you was gonna come home, and <laughs> um. I'm like trying to keep it to myself. Like, oh my God, he's coming home. They gearing up. Like, mm -hmm. it's just a really exciting time because let me tell you, I've been at Hot 97 for seven years, but prior to coming to Hot 97, I was doing radio in Richmond and you guys had the Hot Boy song out. And I'm like, yo, I cannot wait to get this job in New York because, you know, I'm from the Bronx. And so it's like coming home. I'm like, oh, my God, Summer Jam, they're going to be killing it. Y'all had the whole D.C., Maryland, Virginia area just popping all doing the Schmurter dance. Yeah, yeah. I ain't going to lie. I, I went out there for a show and I, I, I seem to love out there. So I definitely appreciate a lot about there, Virginia. Wow. Yo, it was just a good time. Um, but I don't think y'all got to perform that yet, Summer Jam. I think um, y'all yeah, had we went did. away. Yeah, we did. We didn't get to perform. We had got... Um, we just came out that year when Summer Jam had passed. So when we got locked up in December, when the Summer Jam came around, we were still locked up. So we never got to perform in Summer Jam. No, man. I'm telling you, we talk about that sometimes in our mix show meetings, like... When y'all had got locked up, right, and computers were still going. And I remember having a conversation with Camelo. We like, yo, computers. Y'all started the Millie Rock dance, by the way. Um, <laughs> the computers record was so fire. But y'all was like, y'all was already locked up by then. And I remember telling Camelo, like, what do we do? Like, they're locked up. And, like, the yeah. records are so hot. I was so crazy because when I was locked up, I was hearing the feedback. I was like, damn, like. I, that's, the, that I, that's what I was waiting for. So when it happened and I was locked up, all I could do is just like, you know what, fuck it, just take the good with the bad and just know like when I come home, just, you know, still rock off the computer and still have that same energy off that record. Because that record right there, when you hear that beat, it's so like, it hit a soul. It hit your right? soul. It just hits you like, you yeah, just want to start Millie rocking. Would you say, can y'all take credit though for that Millie Rock? Can you can you agree with me on that? That computers definitely was what created I, that Millie like, Rock dance. I told you like I so like I'm from Brooklyn, right? So like when you say Millie Rock, like I like when I see the dance, like I'm me being locked up and like me and being in the streets, like it's a gang out there like that would be doing that dance too. You feel me? Like oh. that, the way they do it. So like when I see two Millie do it, it's like he did it with like his own source. Too, so it's like it really ain't really a shamani dance either because like when our bob like we got like our own little hymn over there and like for us it's like we really didn't even call it a dance we just some niggas that's just get shmoney and whatever we dance to is just shmoney dance we got shmoney whatever bob you do is your dance you feel me so that's how it came about you feel me but it was not not really we sat down like oh yeah we're gonna make a dance nah, nah. Like, we just some wavy cat you just wavy like yeah. I always say this, Brooklyn dudes, and this is probably why I've always dated Brooklyn dudes. Being uh, from Uptown, I always, uh, and Bronx girls love a Brooklyn dude. Shots fired. <laughs> For a fact. Like, there's just something wavy about a Brooklyn guy. That's why I ended up marrying one. Because Brooklyn dudes just have the ultimate, like, swag, but still that aggressive, like, you know, the get jungle. Yes, yeah, like you surviving in the jungle, and then when you survive in the jungle, and there's like you made it out, and it's, it's put together. You got all sense of the feel. You got morals. You got respect. You feel me? If Brooklyn is basically like, especially where I'm from, like it's West Indian. Mm -hmm. So it's like you got certain type of morals, respect when you got a West Indian background. Like they don't play that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then when you mix that with the street shit and the class with the gentleman, the gangsterness, and then when you hear something like a nigga like me, 
They gonna jog you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'll do that in there. You guys me. But I, I will say this though, the Brooklyn drill sound that you guys left off with got bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the sound that you guys, the energy. I always say this: y'all had a different type of energy that y'all brought to the city. The energy was just straight felt. Like you could go anywhere. You can like be at a party in Jersey or, you know, be at a party in down South, that energy that you bought, that you and Bobby brought to the music was just incredible. And that's why I was felt. And it only grew after you guys got locked up. It's like, I let the foundation and then it just catapulted. Yeah. I feel like it's probably just sort of like, this is probably, everybody just probably see like, I the story about happened behind us and then I who else is from there and then when they saw who else is fight from there it's like I they got a story to tell too like for me like I never took from what everybody did like I always hear people saying yo y'all start this people gotta pay homage at the end of the day life goes on you never know what everybody else doing in their life and how hard they worked and how long they was working to get to a point in life and now it finally happened so even if we did shed the light for me I'm, I'm I'm truthfully thankful for that. I, I thank God for even giving me opportunity to do something like that. But I never want to take back from people' work, from what they did to get yeah. to where they at. You feel me? The hard work they put in and shit. You feel me? Because at the end yeah. of the day, the light we did was shine for New York. All right, cool. But at the end of the day, people put that work in to get where they at still and to still even survive where they at. You feel what I'm saying? But yeah. as far as us putting... The light on New York, almost definitely. Uh, right now, who was like, who was really, who was really like giving it that, that that source to look at New York, really, like truthfully, like yeah. not trying to no, say. Now y'all came ignorant. with a different type of energy. That that exactly. energy was a different was, raw energy. Yeah. Uh huh. So uh -huh. 2016, you guys are at the height. You know, you hearing yourself on the radio every day. Did you think? At, any moment that this that route you had to take to go to jail was going to be your life. Did you did you know that that was coming? Oh, you mean twenty fourteen? But um, twenty sixteen shit. Yeah, twenty sixteen. Yeah. I was ready to go to north, but um, twenty fourteen. No, I don't know. Twenty fourteen. Even when I got locked up, when they said yo, um, when they, when they locked us up, I was never thinking I was about to do all this time. I'm like, oh, they locked us up. I right, bail. We're gonna get bailed out. But I never seen jail in my future. Like I always mm -hmm. thought like. Uh, even if I was doing something bad in the streets, I'm like, I didn't get caught that day. So I always thought like, oh, I'm good, you mm -hmm. know? So when they locked me up and they read me all my charges, I'm like, oh shit, they been knew what was going on then, you feel me? So it was like, right, I'm going to get built out, I don't care. Then when the time came, it was like, I couldn't get built because of certain reasons. It started hitting me like, oh shit, like I'm in jail, bro. Like I'm in jail, jail, and I'm not coming home. Yeah. Like I might not like I might not be coming home right now for me. So I just had to let all that process in and just how to get in where I feel it and just, you know, like understand like yo, listen, I'm here right now. Don't cry over it. Make the best out of the worst situation. Yeah. Uh, is it hard for you to talk about this now that you're home? Is it difficult for you or are you are you at uh, the nothing point? Nothing hard for me, nothing difficult for me. I like I'm like, you could talk to me about anything, nothing didn't break me. My heart's still the same. I didn't change a bit. I'm still the same body yeah. like, that went in and came out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Only yeah. thing that changed about me is my growth. My why I just wising up now. I understand life. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? But yeah. I'm still it seems same. like you. It seems like you didn't ad adapt to the jail life. It seemed like you always knew, like I can't get comfortable here. Like this is just a stint. I can't adapt to what what's inside. Is that correct or fair to say? That's. Um, yeah, and no, like, I'm going to get comfortable while I'm here, but understand, I know I ain't staying here. So for the main, for the time being, well, I'm going to get comfortable. I got six years to do. I'm going to get comfortable as I can for six years. You feel me? Yeah. I'm going to get all the clothes I need, all the blankets I need. You feel me? I'm going to make sure my food is always stacked. My money is always right. Did people commentary. treat you different, though? Because you was Roddy Rebel and computers was um, playing and... Um, like as far as like to what extent you gotta say what extent because like so as, as far as like you getting a little extra commissary you getting a little no, extra no because at the end of the day the cops is right there watching the inmates and inmates and like once you there you're like an inmate now like 
inmates yeah. don't care about that shit. Like they regular niggas too. They hood niggas. They don't care about none of that. You Riley who like your regular inmate now. Yeah. All that straight from you. As far as like, as far as like I, I would say like, I'm I was I would say like this. I right, boom. I'm I'm known for being something. So like while I'm in there, certain people that's known for being what they are. Normally would have been like, I right, fuck that. He known for being that. We're going to highlight him. But at the end of the day, certain people looked at it like, nah, that's corny. I'm not doing that. Boy putting on for the city. Boy doing certain shit that's different. You feel me? And boy really uh, stand up individual. So niggas wasn't really trying to rush me. People wasn't really trying to highlight me. But some people was. Also. I'm like, fuck that. I'm hollering that boy. And I was ready for <laughs> that. You feel me? I signed up for it. So. I was ready yeah. for that. Plus, I'm the more aggressive one. Like, I'm the one that's on really on that era time. And so, but I had a really, I had six years. After the six years, my first three years, I was still moving aggressive, still moving, always on uh, offense mode. But then after my last three years, and I got around certain older dudes and certain people, they started teaching me the way. Like, yo, boy, you don't want to see your life go past them here. Put the you camera know? in your face a little bit more. There you go. You don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to see your life go past in here. You don't want to. You don't want to keep doing certain things that that get you jammed up. You don't want to turn fifteen seconds of your worst right. mistake into fifteen years of your life. Exactly. So, so you got to move a certain way so it's not at a time, yeah. on, on, and the clock keep going and resetting and resetting. So, yeah. you know what I love and uh, about you and about. Bobby's relationship and I saw what you put on Instagram and this was deep to me because like you said I love you like you my mother's kid like yeah, that girl. type of loyalty is something different yeah, um sure. especially when you look at where the game is now you know we see so much conversation about snitching and you know people get into this life sometimes just to amplify their careers right and they don't yeah. really live that life and then when things get tough, they ready to bell ship because they really wasn't about that life. And this loyalty that you two have and him taking um, an extra year so you can come home, um, that's a different type of loyalty, man. And I know you guys knew each other from elementary school, but how do you stay so solid when it could have just easily went left? No, you know, it's crazy, like... We have the same relationship every family have, every friends have. We all argue, we all dislike things sometimes, but the love overpower everything, right? Like, <laughs> we've been through some things that like, bro, like, I can't even be here tomorrow to talk about, so like, and we survived those things, so it's like, we appreciate it for each other. Yeah. We're thankful for each other. We're thankful I was there to save your wives that night. I'm thankful yeah. for you being there to save my eyes more than one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Plenty nice. laughs> what do you say but, about uh, what do you say about those who feel like, oh, I gotta in order to get into the game or to be a successful artist, I, I gotta portray this image that I know that ain't really me. Yo, you know what's crazy? You really just gotta be yourself, bro. Because at the end of the day, it's too much pressure. It's it's a it's a full time job to be something you're not. You know how much times you gotta remember a lie once you tell it. <sighs> That's like, what are you doing, bro? Like, and then you know how I always catch people in lies too. Like, this is how I always find out if somebody's corny. I learned this in the jail. Like, for me, because I like, I'm like, all right, it's another buster right here. Like, a guy pull up to you, yo, Roddy, what's up, boy? I fuck with you, I, I, boy, man. Where, where you from, bro? Well, I'm from Queens. Or oh, where I. If you keep going on like you that nigga and you like that man, I, I'm going to I'm test you now. Are you from Queens? Oh, yeah, you know my son, Jojo? Yeah, mm -hmm. I know Jojo. Dark skin. Yeah, he dark skin. Yeah, the one with the dress. Tied it up. Yeah, I know him. I, I think it went on mute. Going on like you know him. You're a buster. Mm -hmm. You feel yeah. me? Like, yeah. you sitting here trying to lie. Like, you're doing, like, corny shit. Like, I always catch people, like, so like, yeah. I always tell niggas like yo, bro, be yourself. It works out. I like certain music that people would never listen to, like like. Ooh, me, right. like tell I me what you like. You on your R and B swag? Let me let me find I out what you like. Chill. Why you from your black? <laughs> 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 <Are> you from... <laughs> nah, but um, 
Nah. I like everything. Like, I would like, like, right now, like, I'll be in the car going home if Z100 or some station come on, I tear the Swift might play. I might sing along to the words, and people will look like, oh, how you know these words? Like, I just yeah. like music, period. I like whatever made me pop. Certain times, these people music have a storyline. Pop music, you listen to their music, it's big storylines in music. Yeah, country music, too. Yeah. Even down yeah. to country music, I listen to certain country music, too. Like, Storytelling in country is amazing, yeah. right? So yeah. I have to ask you this question. Um, because I was in a studio with Remy one day, you know, she spent about six years in prison, seven, one to six summers to be exact. Yeah. And um, she's working on her album and we're going over beats and, and we just I'm listening to stuff, and she pulls out her rhyme book from when she was in prison, and I'm like, Oh my god, like these are just something so incredible incredible yeah. while, that you were writing while you were in jail and then it was a period where she didn't write anything in 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 prison because of she just couldn't get her mind into that space and then i'm like won't you spit some of this stuff that's in your rhyme book and she's like you know i just that that place for me was so dark it's hard for me to get back to it so i i say that to say how much did you keep up with rap while you were locked up did you have a rhyme book did you did um, you, you know were you able crazy? to express yourself I bought like probably like six notebooks and probably got like three raps in each of them. <laughs> wow. Let me tell you why and I understand what she meant by that. And I won't say I fully understand everything she meant by that, but I can relate. And I, I understand what she meant because when you in jail, there's so much people around you. It's hard to get time to really sit down. You got programs, you got shit to do. And then when you really sit down at the end of the night, you think about your whole day that went by. You think about what you want to do when you get home. You think about it. so much shit on your mind. The only time I get to write those raps is when I was in solitary confinement. Yeah. Do, just sitting down there. Well, that's so do. interesting you said that because she said a lot of those raps were written in solitary. Exactly. So it's like, we don't really get the... And population is too much going on. So I never wrote a rap in population. I barely read a book. I love reading books. I read so much books in Rikers Island. I probably read over a thousand books, but in Rikers Island, I was able to get inside a cell and lock in by myself. See, up north, I was around people all the time in dorms. So it's no really time for myself. But when I did write those rhymes, those was like, I ain't gonna lie, to this day, I got this one rap where I did over a Jay-Z song, like, if I should die, don't cry on my niggas, just ride my niggas. Even when I, I did yeah, that over. Yeah, my niggas, yeah. Yeah, don't bust no bullet in the sky, my niggas. Sky, my niggas. Yeah. Side, my sky, niggas. my niggas. Yeah. I love Jay Z's my favorite rapper, by the way. So I had fake play with that and twisted it, and the bros got so quiet when I rapped it. It was like, yo, bro, that is so deep. And there's like, there's like, but you can't do that, bro. Don't do that one right there, like, cause like everybody that makes the song die and shit. I'm like, yeah. Jay Z made that song here and die. It's the route niggas take for me, but at the end of the day. That's a different story, but yeah, how you when you're inside them jails, bro, like your mind be so much. But she also told me too that um, in order to escape the reality, she kind of had to cut off like feeling okay, a holiday is coming, so I'm just gonna cut that off. Like it's just gonna be an every day. I'm not gonna feel that. In order to get through the time, she forgot birthdays and forgot that that sometimes it was a holiday. Was that something that you experienced as well? I am going to hold you. I'm going to keep it all the way 100. Nah. You know why? I'm so... I've been through so much in life, TT. I'm going to tell you like this. I done survived. I done escaped death so much times. Yo. I done escaped death so much time. I had got seven years, and I feel like God been so good to me. Like, mm -hmm. I done got away with so much things in life, and I feel like it's time for me to really sit down and take... Mm. What I did in life and just accept it. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, like that, but that's a good way to look at it. So it's a accountability. Is did you find or discover something about yourself during that time that you probably didn't realize? Yeah, like before? my last two years. Like my last two years, like I said, like my last I wouldn't say my last three, I say my last two. But three is when I just moved to my next jail and just finally met those people. But when I started really getting together and I started learning, like, yo, bro, like you about to be 29 when you come home. You got a platform where you can lead people into destruction or you can lead people into greatness. Because at the end of the day, 
if 10 people listen to me and want to do greatness, that's an accomplishment still, even if it ain't a million or a hundred. That's 10 lives right there that could create a hundred lives. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm just on some shit like, yo, I'm just going to always remain me, be the same, you feel me? But like, let me change and do certain things now that could, for me, be better for people, bro. Stop hurting people. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, like, I don't always got to be vicious. So now I'm just on some, like, let's do that. You always got to be on demon time. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, like, yeah, like well, I don't got to <laughs> be vicious. Like, I'm not a vicious person. I'm just one of those kids, like, love me. If you don't love me, then you hate me, yeah. right? Yeah. If you don't rock with me, you don't like me. So oh, I want to get into to to the music a little bit because you you have the record out with Nav, that yes, Funk Flex scary. record. Hey, yo, Nav, what's up, my brother? That's the that man. Funk that that Nav Funk boy. Flex record is all I hear when I go through Brooklyn. I was yeah. just in Brooklyn last weekend getting my son a haircut. That's all I hear mm -hmm. in Brooklyn is that record with you and Funk Flex. Yeah, I'm, yeah, reroute. So, I had to reroute. So so much time has passed, and and now you see like the TikToks and like, you know, all these, these different elements. Um, do yeah. you feel pressure to like have to be, oh my God, I got to do these numbers and I got to do this and I got to pick the right record. And oh, I don't even, yo, I swear, no. Um, to the point where it's like, I still got to remember who I am. I still be forgetting like who I am. Cause like, I'll be jumping out the car, like, like, and just going to the store. Like, yo, put over to the store and go to the store quick. They're like, yo, what are you talking about going to the store? I'm like, I'm, I'm thirsty. I'm like, but you can't just get out the car and go to the store right now. Like, you wildin'. I'm like, all right, bro, can y'all just get something for the store for me? Like, I'm thirsty. Like, it should be shit like that. So it's like, when y'all say, like, do I, there's no pressure for me. Like, I'm just. Are you having fun? Yeah, like, you feel me? Yeah. I go to the studio, I never think, like, oh, I need that hit record, right? No, I'm going to the studio. And make whatever I want to make for me and my guys, how we want to bop. Well, I like to listen. If y'all going to like it and bop with it, I I it. love when artists say that to me. I I yeah. love to hear artists say, I go to the studio to make whatever I want to make. Yeah, that's right, it. Right? Yeah, I don't care who don't like it. You don't like it, that's you. I like it. I love it. But that's, that's amazing. That's what makes you an artist. I think when artists start putting these... Um, incredible amount of pressures to, to hit TikTok numbers or have to have a dance and have to do all of this stuff. I think it takes away the art and it takes away the creativity That's, of an artist. Don't go how it want because you point too much pressure on yourself. You 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 probably say a line in your rap that was probably could have put you on Billboard, but you took it out thinking like, oh, that's not it. Yeah, nah, that was it. Go with your first guy. I don't, I don't know. Me, yeah. TJ, I'm just so happy to be home. I'm so happy to have my family back. Like, I'm what's the first home, thing like, you ate when you came home? I know I read in the double XL mag um article that you did. You went and got a manicure, pedicure, and your girl took you. And yeah. um, and I think you got a facial too. Yeah, I did. I didn't like that facial, it burned my face. <laughs> <laughs> but what did what you did eat? I, eat? I know you. Um, I know you went to oh, Brooklyn. We had catered food. We had catered food. Damn, I'm so sorry. I forgot the name. If she's watching this, I'm so sorry. But big up to you. Um, wow. We had catered food. It was the food was actually good too. I didn't eat everything. Yeah. I ate oxtails and rice and peas. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about um, when you were out. When you was in, I should say, a lot of artists you know, was shouting you out on records, shouting both you and um Bobby out on records. I remember um the first time Pop Smoke ever came up to Hot 97, he did the show with me. He did the interview on my show. And he mentioned you guys being such an influence to him. And you were on his um rec his album you know, um that came out after he passed away. Uh, yeah. What was it like for you to just hear all these artists reaching out? And did they did they reach out to you while you were locked up as well? Yeah, a couple of artists, a lot of artists is there um, for me. Like, to me, it was like, you know, like, I don't know, like, I, I, I appreciate all the love and support I was getting from a lot of artists, you feel me? Because at the end of the day, people be busy. Like, I'm home now, and I understand how busy people be. And it don't be that people don't want to show love, or it don't be that people don't want to answer their phone. No, when you got got 100 people calling your phone every day, they get annoying after a while. Mm -hmm. It don't get to a point where you don't love that person still, because I still got the same love for people. But at the end of the day, boy, I, I'm tired. I don't want to answer this phone right now. Ah, you feel me? 
Mm-hmm. So I understand. So for people to go out their way and stop their busy day to show love and support, that means a lot. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I heard that Young Thug FaceTimed you and he sent you some um some jewelry. All right. So boom. Yeah, I was in the stool. Um, um, Slow had FaceTime. Thug. We was on the phone FaceTime. Thug. And the jewelry man was in the um studio, period. We was going to get some jewelry for them. And Thug, um, Slow happened on the phone with Thug and we was chopping it. And he like, I'm like, yo, bro, these two chains right here. He like, yeah, tell the jewelry man those right there. Yeah, grab those right there. Those for you. I got them. I'm like, wow. what? He, he like, yeah, those two right there. I'm like, yo, that eyes, bro? He like, yeah, put those two on you right there and tell him I got them. Give me his number. And wow. I walked out the studio that night with them shits. Wow. That's incredible. I love to see okay. artists look out for other artists because, you know, when y'all work together, and hopefully you and Thug can get a, get something in the studio oh. and chop it up and work together because yeah, it only yeah. helps. It only manifests and helps, you know, keep yeah. growing your career. You know what I mean? My twin, man. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I got nothing but love for Thug, man. Like, that right there, like, put the stamp on it. Like, yeah. like for me, real ones ain't gone. You feel what I'm saying? They when still here. Yeah. When you say real ones, it ain't just about because... You could pull a trigger or, or, or you feel me, or you could fight or you so aggressive. The real one is a stand up guy, bro, all around the board. Take your home, responsibilities. You feel me? They word is they bond. You feel me? You stand on your word. Ten yeah. toes. Let your nuts drag in any situation. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's that. You feel me? Like right so- now, like, God. God no, 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 no. Go ahead. You was about to say something. Go ahead. Like, like right now, like for me, I, I'm home right now, and like certain things that I'm doing, I feel like certain people from my neighborhood and my borough should have been doing you for me. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's not no shots to nobody for me, not to no robbers, that's to every single body that got for me a, a, a piece of platform, a piece of money, or a piece of leeway, or even a voice. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Niggas keep talking about Black Lives Matter, all this, all this. Like, let's get together and do things that you feel what I'm saying. Like, yeah, work together people, so that people don't yeah. have to go to the streets. Like, build Girl, each other up. Yeah. Who do you want? Ready, I'm ready. Like, but yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just saying back, I'm just watching what's going on. Yeah. Who real. do you want to work with? What's your dream collaboration? I don't really, like, truthfully, I don't really have a dream collaboration because, like, like I said, like, I'm just love music. Like a so favorite much. producer or somebody that you know I like I just gotta get in with him one time. Oh, I don't know. I never sat down and thought about something like that. I swear. Okay. And I'm really wanna do that now. Like who do I see fit that a me will make a big fire. I never really yeah, that's fine. You, th- you gave me something to think about now. Think like, about it. Like, yeah, I am. Oh. I swear I am because I so, like I never I never thought about that. So I got I got the little call that you know I'm not gonna put the person on blast, but you know Bobby it, looking to come home really really soon. You know what I'm saying? I just need to know, um, could we possibly get? And I'm just gonna put this out there: the return of Bobby and Rowdy at Summer Jam 2021. If it happens, I'm just saying, can we get the movie on the main stage? Come on, why wouldn't we turn up for y'all? You know, can we rewind it to 2014? You know what I'm saying? And like, no, we're gonna get that summer jam. We never lie, really like, got. No, I ain't gonna lie, like, we definitely gonna show up to summer jam. And I normally want to speak on my brother behalf, but I know my brother ain't gonna be summer jam. Like, <laughs> I just know, like, for me, like, certain things is just, just mandatory. And summer jam is mandatory. Yeah, summer jam is mandatory. We gotta hit that stage and put on for people. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, we yeah. did. So yeah, how did. do you how how do you like um Epic Records? You back with Sylvia and the team over there at Epic. How oh, are they Sylvia seeing Sylvia is like I let me tell you, Sylvia is like my second mother right now. Like, <laughs> like that's like that mama love, like it's not beloved there, it's like my family for me, they don't show me nothing beloved. Um like I said, every time I bring this up, I talk every time Epic is brought up, I always tell people like whatever think it was day four don't ever shame them or nothing like mm-hmm. there have been nothing but good charge even when the six months that we got out there like for me we did certain things in our career that certain artists didn't do in their career and they had a longer shot than us longer run than us so. yeah big, big. 
Miss Silver yeah. and Hope. So the NAV record is out. That's your official single. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you was unexpected to see you and NAV collab. I'm like, Rowdy and NAV? Like that was that was something interesting for me, but I like it, it. You know what it is? People only see what goes on on camera. You feel me? So outside of camera, you don't really know anybody's character. Yeah. You don't know what we make y'all see. You know what I'm saying? You only give the universe what you want them to see. Exactly. So, for instance, you might look at anyone. You probably look at a rapper and think, oh, this rapper is weird or this rapper is this. I like Nav. I fuck with Nav. He's but been on the show a, a few be, times. Uh huh. A stepper. <laughs> and he's just. He's an it. incredible producer, too, by the way. Yeah. Who Nav? Yeah. Oh, I ain't even never know. I never knew Nav produced. I'm about to holler at my brown boy right now. You know he produced like, um back. He co-produced back to back with um Drake. That uh the disc record to Meek. He co-produced that one. I didn't know that until recently. He came on my show and told me that that was one of the big records he did. He co he produces a lot of his own joints. He produces for um the weekend. He's done stuff. Co-produced stuff. Yeah, he's ill. His pen game is ill too. Yeah, I fuck with my boy now. What pen? My boy went in the booth. He was no pen. <laughs> my son went yeah. in the booth. Like, it took like 10 minutes for the room. I'm like, now nah, my boy is there. My son, brown boy. Now he ain't tell me producer. I got to holler at the brown boy. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Do, you do, your, do you do your music like that too? Do you get in and just yeah. go in the booth? Yeah, I punch in. I feel like it's more, I feel like it's more creative. I feel like it's no pressure. I feel like, you know, like when I'm in a studio and I hear a beat and I hear a flow, and I start freestyling to it, that's when your best work will come out. See, then when you sometimes, I don't know, for me, sometimes certain artists will just start writing and it's best for them. That's what works. But for me, I don't like to write because sometimes I feel like I'm reading off a paper when I'm reciting it. Mm -hmm. so like it and it comes come across when you, yeah, in your music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it comes pretty natural when I just do it like that. Yeah. Well, listen, I told your publicist, I want to come in the studio. I want to hear the new material. We got to oh, turn it one time. Anytime. And um, I wish you well. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Um, it's Rowdy Rebel, everybody. Um, I'm going to hold you to that summer jam, the return, the Brooklyn boys. Oh, God. Hey, do the whole, the whole dance and everything. <laughs> uh, uh, I ain't going to disappoint. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Another episode of Artist Quarantine brought to you by Boost Mobile. I'm your host, Titi Torres, and my special guest, Rowdy Rebel, everybody. Yay! Thank you for joining. Big grit. I'm coming to see you soon. I said I just pull up. All right.